So now we're going to look at some of the talks. So this could now become interesting because it's going to be a, a combination of Mark Harris and Tom Fraser. Uh, and Mark's going to be uh, explaining some things, but then he's going to have the, the mouse, the computer mouse, and I'm going to be doing the talk. And so we'll just see how big a mess we can get into. Mark. Thanks, Tom. Uh, I hope that's coming up. Folks, you can see a screen there, just a simple um, spreadsheet. This is something we used uh, just to help out during the drought over the last couple of years when we were trying to do stock takes for farmers on what feed they had available, and we weren't able to visit farm. And I want to pick up a little thing that Tom mentioned. We, we've got to use numbers, and that's the 1,300 kilograms of dry matter you can see there. Uh, 1,300 is the number of views, obviously. But the kilograms of dry matter on that sword stick, Tom, we probably a little bit crude on the East Coast trying to get people who didn't communicate that way. And we sort of said, you know how high a piece of sheep shit is? And most farmers know that. And I said, well, if we worked out it is at about a thousand kilograms of dry matter, each one we stack on top, we'll lift it up. So that calibration is what we're talking about, isn't it, Tom? When we look at the numbers when you sword stick and that's where it's very helpful. Yeah. Yes, and, and you need to be aware that that pasture covers all the uh, covers on the particular paddock <clears throat> at the ground level. So we, we talk about 1,200 or 1,300 kilograms of dry matter per hectare. That is the ground level. So if you're in a cattle situ grazing situation, you may only be able to graze, the, the cattle may only be able to graze down to uh, 1,000 or 1,100. Uh, in a sheep situation, they may be able to graze down to six or 700, depending on how dense the soil is. But, uh, so you can't, if you've got 1,200 kilograms of dry matter there, it doesn't mean that is all available to the animal because the grazing type will come into it. Cool, thanks, Tom. I think it's good, good to set the pace. So what we did is we obviously got the tallies off the farmers and put them in. We've got the stock units in here and their the sort of requirements, sorry, the requirements of daily um, feed intake roughly. And then we filled in the area. And these are numbers you're going to see in a moment on another spreadsheet that we put together with Tom. Um, and then that would be the, the feed on hand on the day, grazing down, as Tom said, to the lowest we could graze. Um, and in that case, if nothing happened, no further growth occurred, we'd have 33 days of feed. So we just chucked that in as a, as a bit of a taster to kick us in. So when you're bringing that up, uh, Mark, the daily dry matter requirements, so where, do, where does the farmer get those, those numbers from? Um, there's, there's the feed planning... Um, Feed planning workbook that uh, goes with your workshop, and that's on the website. I think at the end we'll see a couple of those, Tom. And there are others here. There are feed and take tables around if you if you Google and can find them um, on our website and other websites as well. Um, and, and I think that's going to lead into your conversation about how we use it in this spreadsheet. The intake we decide what intake an animal would be requiring to do what we want to do. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so what I've got here is just a feed budget for the a winter period, and I'm going to go through and explain a few things on here. So then when we go to the two examples, uh, it will become a little bit clearer. So what I've done is that I'm doing a feed plan for from the 1st of May uh, to around to the 31st end of July, to July, and I'm just saying that I'm going to be starting lambing around about mid-August. So I'm doing this feed plan uh, up till from early winter, 1st of May, through till about two weeks before, or around about the seed stocking time. Uh, and you'll see there's some yellow boxes here. The, the yellow boxes are the boxes that you have to fill in, uh, and then the spreadsheet does all the maths for you. So uh, you'll see that the effective area, we've got 200 hectare farm. Obviously, that's something that you're going to fill in yourself, uh, and you're going to decide what dates they are. The number of days that will come up from the bottom, you can see where that comes from, but that's automatic. And we've just put in here that we've got uh, 1,300 ewes, 900 of those ewes are in what we consider to be good condition, probably body condition four, three, three and a half. Uh, and we've, from the tables we've taken that they require around about 2% of their body weight per day to maintain themselves. And I'm just going to try and maintain them through the winter period. The 2% of body weight for the feed allowance, that's based on average to good quality feed. If you've got a whole lot of rubbish feed, 
uh, that you're trying to clean up over the winter period, then you'd need to increase that percentage uh, of live weight to maintenance, and it may be 2.5% or it was really rubbish, it may be 3%. Or if it was really, really top quality feed, it may come down to 1.7, 1.8%. So there are some of those things that you're going to have to make judgment calls on. We put the live weight in there, and it's estimated that those that model of 900 use would require around about 1.3 kilograms per day, uh, and it comes out of the total requirement. We've identified that we've got 400 ewes that are a bit light in condition. So we're saying we need to feed them a bit more, increase their body condition score, uh, and we're going to allow them 2.5% of their body weight. And they're only 62K. Uh, we've got a few 200 ewe hoggets there, maintaining them through the winter, 2% uh, to 45 kilograms. And if you've got some lambs on, or some rams, or other stock, cheap stock classes, you could put them in there. And then we've got our cattle, uh, same thing, 50 cows, around about 1.5% for maintenance at 550K, they require uh, 8.25 kilograms of dry milk per day. Uh, down to the bottom, we've got 20 uh, two-year-old male cattle, uh, et cetera. So that has then come up with the total uh, feed demand uh, for the, those stock classes. Then if we go further down the spreadsheet, we're now going to do the feed supply. So we've estimated, or it's estimated that the pasture growth rates, and again, that comes from the beef and lamb uh, resources uh, for May, June, July, the uh, average pasture growth rates, and they will vary depending on where you are in the country. And I know that there are people here on the, the score from Southland right up to Northland. So, those pasture growth rates will vary and you need to look them up and put your own pasture growth rates in. Uh, the growth period, you'll see that we've got those, you need to put in how many days there are in the, each month and we did struggle with Mark knowing how many days there were in June at one stage and we got there in the end. Uh, and that adds up to the 92 and that automatically went back up to that top box. Got some supplements. So in this example, we've got 50 bales of baleage and their weight, the weight of those bales is 600 kgs. Now, this is where some farmers go get it wrong, is that, okay, right, my baleage is 600 kgs and they put it out as 600 kgs of dry matter. Baleage is not 100% dry matter. And we're just estimating that our baleage is 50% dry matter so that dry matter per, buck, per unit in that case is 300 kilograms per bale. And you'll see in the next column, we've got a utilization figure. Again, this is important to put this in because unfortunately we do not utilize all the feed that we're feeding out to the animal, particularly in silage, baleage or hay. If you've got good dry conditions and good quality baleage, you may be utilizing 80, 85%. Uh, so again, that's a number, a figure that you could put in, uh, depending on what conditions you have and what quality of feed is. Hay, again, uh, we we'll put in the dry weight, uh, the weight of the bales of 450. Hay is round about 90, perhaps just over 90% dry matter. Utilization in our case, it's going to be 80%. And we've just put a ton of grain in there, ton of barley, uh, a thousand kilograms. Our utilization, particularly if the animals have been used to feeding, uh, being fed a bit of grain, is pretty high. It's never 100%. We can never utilize 100% of the feed that we're on, offering the animals. Uh, so I'll put that in there at 90%. And we decided that we would put on a wee bit of nitrogen in late autumn. Uh, and we've put out the 200 hectares that we've got, we've put on 50 hectares. Uh, we've put nitrogen, I should say, on 50 hectares at the rate of 25 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. And then the next column out, well, we have the, the 10, that's the response rate. So that's really the, a default response rate for nitrogen. You should always be able to get around about at least 10 kilograms of pasture grown per kilogram of nitrogen applied, provided you've got some moisture in, a, in the late autumn unless things are really bad. 
uh, you're going to have moisture available, so you will get 10. In good conditions, you may get up to 20, uh, but it pays to be a wee bit conservative when you're doing a feed plan, so I'll just put it in 10. And then you come down towards the bottom, we've done our opening covers with the sword stick, uh, and they averaged out over the farm at 1,600 kilograms. Uh, the deficit surplus over that 92-day period is negative, just over, around about 220 kilograms per hectare, uh, and we end up with a projected pasture cover at the end of July of 1380. Now, I'm going, I'd set myself some targets before I did this feed plan, and I wanted to have around about 1,500 kilograms of dry matter per hectare uh, on my grazing area at set stocking time. So I haven't reached that target. So I've done the speed plan back in April, late, mid, late April. It gives me the ability to do some things, make some adjustments to try and achieve the target that I've set myself. So if we go, this is where it's going to be a wee bit interesting. So if we go quite simply, if we go into the baleage, and I'm going to buy another 50 bales of baleage. So that goes up to 100. And that immediately uh, brings me up to the 1,500 kilograms of dry matter. So if you just go back, Mark, to the 50 kg again, the 50 bales again, uh, so you'll see right down the bottom that we're at 1,381. And now we go, go back to the baleage and put it in at 100. And it goes, it's doing all the maths for us, so it's come up to 1,500. So I'd be quite happy with that, so I might go out and buy some baleage. But there are other options available. If I know there's no baleage around, I shall we go back to the 50? Uh, let's buy 10 tonne of grain. So we're going to buy 10 tonne of grain. And it brings me up to 14, 1480. So there are the sort of things that it gives you the ability to do back in late autumn to try and achieve the targets that you want to achieve uh, at that set stop in time. It may be there are other options available, but that's up to you guys to have that play. So once you've got that basic information in there, you can then do different scenarios very, very quickly because it's doing all the maths for you uh, and you can come up with the answers that you want to may want to come up with. Um, is that all you'd like to do with that one, Tom? Yeah, so now we'll go on to a a scenario which may well be some where some of you are placed at the moment because you can't get stock in the processing plant. So we're just going to do one for a mob of balls for a start off. So we've got this mob of balls on today on the 16th of March, uh, and we now can't, they will meet, we've gone to the works, but we can't get them killed till the 30th of April. Uh, and we've got 40 hectares available on our farm that we have allocated for those bulls to try and get them through to this period. So uh, we go straight down, we take all the sheep out, we go straight down to the uh, rising two-year-old bulls, and we've got 100 of them uh, from the table, for the 400 kg. Uh, they require around about 1.8% of reasonably high-quality feed. Uh, and it works it through with this 32,400 kilograms in total required. <coughs> uh, so, Tom, I'm just going to chuck something in here. If they required a 2%, we just do the same thing and it'll yeah. calculate through. So, it's very quick if you think that they require 2% or 2.3%, you're still trying to grow them. But you'll get those numbers from those tables. So, um, we've gone back to the 1.8, and then we come down to the uh, the feed, how much feed we've got available. So the feed supply, pasture growth rate in March and April, and again, these are figures that you'll have some idea of. Uh, we've just said there are only 15 days left in March, and it's been pretty dry. It's only going to grow about 80 to 20 kilograms a day, uh, and it's going to get pretty cold in April, and we're down to 10 a day, so our growth rates are not very, not great. Uh, with the opening covers from our sword stick right down towards the bottom of 1400. And if we do nothing, 
Uh, we're going to end up with a pasture cover of just over 1,100 or 1,180 kilograms dry matter. And as I pointed out earlier, once you get down to the sort of 1,100 in a cattle a pasture cover in a cattle grazing situation, those cattle may be struggling to be able to harvest enough material in a 24-hour period to be able to get enough for maintenance feeding. It's all around about uh, bite size. So if those animals can't get a significant amount of material that needs bite, uh, it means that they're going to struggle. There's only so many hours in a day, so uh, we know that you know, once you're down to, particularly down to 1,000, 1,100, the cattle just can't take enough bites in a day to achieve uh, harvesting enough material to maintain. So I'm not happy with that 1,100. I don't want to get down to 1,100. I'd like to stay up around about 1,400. And so I've got a bit of supplements available. So we're just going to put in 50 bar. Oh, sorry, we've got 42 days. I'm going to put in a bale a day of silage. So we'll put in, uh, we've got 40, 45 days. So we'll put in 45 bales of silage. And that immediately uh, gets me up to the 1,400. Uh, if I didn't have any baleage available, I had some hay available, or didn't have any supplements available, but there was another 10 hectares of my farm that I could make available to those bulls. So rather than the 40 hectares, I'll go to the 50 hectares. And how does how do we get on there? What happens down the bottom line? So yep, yeah, so we're over over the target of 1400. So it may be that I only have to make an extra five hectares of home. But these are the sort of things that you can do. And as I said earlier on in that first spreadsheet is once you have the basic information in there, uh, it's very, very quick to make scenario, to do some scenarios and find out just what effect it would have. So you're going to go into a breakout shortly. So you can... Uh, come back with any questions on these, but the, the other one that we're going to look at now is one for land. So we've done one for your cattle. So now we're going to go on to one for some lands that haven't been able to get to the process of plant. So again, same dates. We've got uh, these lands that should have gone today or last week and they're still on the farm. Uh, again, we can't kill them till the 30th of April. Uh, so it's 45 days. And we've got 20 hectares available for these lands. Uh, we're trying to flush our ewes or trying to maintain our ewes to put the ram out. So we've only got 20 hectares available. Um, 600 in the mob, and they require around about 2% of their body weight, average good quality feed to maintain themselves. Uh, it works out the total requirement, and we go down the bottom. And the feed supply, uh, again, we've left it at the same growth rates. But again, as I've said, depending on where you are in the country and what state you're at as far as moisture, et cetera, or say to your pasture, it, it may vary slightly. Uh, so pasture covers for those lambs are going to be grazing. Average covers 1,200 from the sword stick. Uh, if I do nothing, I'm going to end up at just around about 900 pasture cover, which is not enough for those lambs to be able to maintain or barely enough. So again, I'm going to have to do something. Uh, again, we can have a play. We can put in uh, half a bale of silage. So that's about 22 bales of silage, silage a day and see what happens. So that brings it up to a thousand. Three, perhaps not quite enough. Perhaps I need to put in a bale of silage a day. So it'd be 45. So it brings me up to just over 1,100. So I'm reasonably happy with that, but I may not have any baleage available. So we're going to take the baleage out. I can't feed grain. These animals haven't been used to grain. So. Uh, but I'm, what happens if I'm, have, I'm going to slog another 10 hectares from the ewes? So rather than the 20 hectares at the top, I'm going to make uh, 30 hectares available for those animals. And we go down the bottom. Uh, and that's saying that we're 1,040 has brought me up, but I'm still struggling a wee bit. But, so I've just used some examples there, but I'll stress again that once you have that basic information in there, 
it's very easy to do scenarios. Of what if what if I do this? What if I do that? Uh, how can I achieve the targets that I'm I've set myself? So you all have some sort of targets that you want to do. And in this particular case, the last for example we use that's been trying to feed these animals uh, that haven't been, we haven't been able to get off the property uh, because of what's happened with COVID. So uh, what can I do? to safeguard myself and get less worry uh, so I can sleep at night and I know that things are going to turn out okay. So one of the key, so things, key things, things, yeah, one of the key things here, we've pulled this out of a, a, a an existing sort of a widget that's on our website and just um, expanded it a bit. And these will be these will be made available when we lock down the cells, all the yellow cells are rendering and we'll send you all out a copy of um, of these of the base spreadsheets for you if it's helpful. So you'll get that at the finish. So yep, 